Did you know that the people you surround yourself with have a massive impact on your mindset and success? If you want to live a fulfilling, high-quality life, you need to be aware of the toxic personalities that can drain your energy and derail your goals. Whether it's the constant competitor, the drama magnet, or the egoist who always puts themselves first, each of these types can slowly chip away at your peace and progress. The best way to protect yourself from these negative forces is to understand them, so you can avoid falling into their traps. Recognizing these personality types, both in yourself and others, is the first step in reclaiming control over your life. Avoid this mistake. If you want to thrive, you need to steer clear of these toxic traits. In today's video, we're diving deep into 10 of the most draining personalities you could encounter and how to avoid letting them steal your happiness, your peace of mind, and your success. Don't believe the myth that these behaviors are just harmless quirks. They can have a serious impact on your growth. Stick around to learn how to deal with these toxic individuals, starting with the eternal complainer all the way to the Lord of Pessimism. Let's get started. Number one, the eternal complainer. Ah, we've all encountered them. You know the type, the person who's always got something to complain about. It's like every day is an uphill battle, and no matter how much you try to offer a word of encouragement, they just can't seem to see the silver lining. It's almost like a bad habit, one that drags them down, and unfortunately, sometimes drags you down with them. In the beginning, you might feel sympathy. You might even try to be the listening ear they so desperately seek. But over time, it gets draining. It doesn't take long for you to start feeling their energy sucking away at yours. You go from feeling cheerful, ready to take on the world, to walking away from the conversation, feeling completely exhausted. Let's think about this for a moment. Seneca, the great Stoic philosopher, once remarked, It is not the man who has too little, but the man who craves more, that is poor. What does that mean in this context? The eternal complainer is someone who doesn't appreciate what they have. They're constantly seeking more, dissatisfied with the present moment, and blind to the blessings already around them. For them, life is always about what's missing, about what they don't have yet, or the hurdles they haven't overcome. Their dissatisfaction doesn't come from actual scarcity, but from an insatiable craving that no amount of complaining will ever satisfy. And this can be contagious, like a virus infecting everyone they come in contact with. It's not about silencing grievances entirely, because let's be honest, life isn't perfect, and we all have our moments of frustration. But it's about acknowledging what's within your control, addressing what can be changed, and having the wisdom to let go of what cannot. You see, Stoicism teaches us to focus on what is within our power and learn to let go of the rest. It encourages us to practice gratitude, to recognize the beauty in the simple things, and to find contentment not in external circumstances, but in how we choose to react to them. Now, think back for a moment. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you just couldn't escape the endless complaints of someone around you? Maybe it was a friend, a colleague, or even a family member. Perhaps in the past, you tried your best to comfort them. Or maybe you found yourself giving them advice that, despite your best intentions, just didn't seem to hit home. At first, it was okay. You felt like the supportive friend. But as time wore on, something changed. The joy you once felt from spending time together began to fade replaced by a subtle feeling of frustration. How many times did you sit in silence, hoping the conversation would turn to something more positive, only for them to veer back into complaints? It's exhausting. When you understand this dynamic, you begin to see that, as a Stoic, it's okay to distance yourself from these energy-draining situations. Recognizing that someone's perpetual dissatisfaction can affect your own inner peace is not selfish, it's self-preservation. 
By distancing yourself, you're not casting judgment rather, you're protecting your energy to focus on your own growth. The Stoic mindset teaches us to be selective about our company, because the company we keep can shape our mindset and our path in life. If you surround yourself with constant complainers, you might find yourself unintentionally adopting their attitude. That's why a true Stoic values the pursuit of peace over the approval of others. It's about setting healthy boundaries that allow for personal growth and peace of mind. Now let's reflect for a moment. Have you ever been the one who, despite your best efforts, couldn't seem to find happiness in your situation? Perhaps number two, the toxic critic. Oh, the toxic critic. We've all encountered that person who seems to have something negative to say about everything you do. And it's not just the casual feedback, it's the kind that feels personal, it stings, it cuts deep. They seem to get some sort of satisfaction from pointing out flaws, not in a constructive way, but rather in a way that diminishes your worth. It's like they've made it their life's mission to find faults in others, to elevate themselves by tearing others down. At first, you might have brushed it off, thinking they were just trying to help. But after a while, you begin to notice the pattern the criticism isn't about helping you improve, it's about making them feel superior. Epictetus wisely stated, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters, and therein lies the heart of the matter. Toxic criticism can only affect you if you allow it to. The stoic response is not to engage in a power struggle with the critic, but to discern the difference between helpful feedback and an attack on your character. True growth comes from constructive criticism that seeks to guide you, not from the kind that seeks to break you down. A stoic is selective about the feedback they accept. If the criticism is not rooted in truth or aimed at personal growth, it holds no value. I'm sure you've been there before. That conversation where someone tears into you, leaving you feeling deflated and small. Maybe it happened at work, where your ideas were shot down with harsh words. Or maybe it was a family member who, despite their good intentions, couldn't help but point out everything you were doing wrong. In those moments, it can be hard not to feel like the weight of the world is crashing down on you. But here's the catch. Once you realize the critic's true motives, you can begin to protect yourself. Not every word of criticism deserves your emotional investment. A Stoic understands that their self-worth is not contingent upon the opinion of others. They know that external judgment can never define them unless they allow it to. So, think about the last time someone gave you harsh criticism. How did it make you feel? Did you let it affect your sense of self-worth? Or did you shrug it off, understanding that their words reflected more about them than they did about you? The truth is, the toxic critic will always be around, lurking in the shadows, ready to strike at any moment. But as you develop a stoic mindset, you become more immune to their attacks. You begin to cultivate a sense of inner strength that isn't easily shaken by the opinions of others. Let's get nostalgic for a second. Remember when you were younger and maybe you sought out validation from everyone? Perhaps you were more susceptible to the criticism of others. Maybe you even thought you had to change yourself to meet everyone's expectations. That was a time when you didn't have the wisdom or the understanding of your own value. But now, as you reflect on it, you realize just how much you've grown. You've learned to filter out the noise to focus on what truly matters. The stoic mindset has helped you realize that growth doesn't come from the approval of others. It comes from within. Number three, the drama magnet. Ah, the drama magnet. We've all met this person. They seem to live in a constant state of chaos, as though peace is something they simply can't stand. It's like they have an invisible force field that attracts drama, conflict and agitation. They thrive in it. They often exaggerate situations, blowing things out of proportion just to keep the narrative going. It's exhausting to be around, 
because you constantly feel like you're being pulled into a whirlwind of unnecessary drama, you might find yourself asking, why do I always get dragged into their mess? Epictetus once said, men are disturbed not by things, but by the views which they take of them. In other words, the drama magnet doesn't just live through life, they experience life through a lens of conflict. To them, everything is a potential crisis. A minor inconvenience becomes a major issue. A disagreement becomes a full-blown argument. And guess what? They want you to be a part of it. They need someone to join them in their storm, someone to reflect their heightened emotions back at them. A Stoic, however, understands that drama is nothing more than a distraction from what truly matters. And as a Stoic, you learn to remain calm in the face of it. Think back to a time when you were involved in someone's drama. Perhaps it was a friend who was always at odds with others, or maybe it was a co-worker who seemed to have a problem with everyone. At first, it might have seemed interesting, maybe even exciting, but over time, you began to realize how draining it was. You saw how it took away from your own peace, how it affected your relationships, and how, despite your best efforts to stay out of it, you always ended up being dragged back in. The drama magnet feeds off of this. They need the attention, they need the chaos, and without it, they feel lost. But as a Stoic, you know that peace of mind is far more valuable than the temporary excitement of drama. Nostalgically, remember how easy it used to be to get caught up in drama when you were younger. Perhaps you were drawn to the thrill of conflict, or found yourself arguing with others over trivial things. But as you grow and gain more wisdom, you start to realize that this isn't the path to true fulfillment. The drama magnet while they may have excitement, lack peace. And as you've grown older and wiser, you've come to see that true happiness lies in the absence of drama, not in its presence. Now, think about it. Do you find yourself more often drawn into drama, or have you managed to distance yourself from the chaos? The more you embrace stoicism, the more you realize that maintaining peace is within your control. You don't need to participate in every conflict. You don't need to get involved in every argument. And most importantly, you don't need to let someone else's drama define your emotional state. So, what's your next move? Are you ready to take control of your emotional peace and step out of the drama-filled whirlwind? Number four, the constant competitor. You know the type, the person who turns every conversation, every interaction, into a competition. They can't help themselves. They don't just want to win. They need to win. It's as if everything in life becomes a race, a contest, and a constant opportunity to prove themselves superior to others. From casual banter to deeper conversations, this individual finds a way to turn it into a measure of who's better, and it's exhausting. At first, you might be amused by their enthusiasm, you laugh it off, thinking it's just harmless fun. But as time passes, you begin to feel the weight of their constant need to prove something. It wears you down, and what once felt like playful rivalry turns into an unspoken tension. At first, you might feel a little uncomfortable. You know that their need to outdo you isn't rooted in malice, but it's still grating. It can make even the simplest interactions feel like a high-stakes game. And at times you might wonder, why does it have to be this way? Life should be about connection, collaboration, and shared experiences, not constant competition. The Stoics, however, would offer a different perspective. Marcus Aurelius, one of the greatest Stoic philosophers, understood this dynamic well. In his meditations, he said, the impediment to action advances action, what stands in the way becomes the way. In essence, Stoicism teaches us that obstacles are opportunities for growth, but they also teach us that life isn't a race against others. It's a journey of self-improvement. Stoicism promotes the idea of competing with yourself, striving to be a better version of who you were yesterday. It's not about surpassing others, 
but surpassing your former self. So when you encounter the constant competitor, you begin to realize that their fixation on winning is not only exhausting, it's misguided. Their pursuit of external validation creates a cycle of constant dissatisfaction. Think back to your own experiences. Have you ever been around someone who just couldn't help but compete at everything? Maybe it was a colleague who always had to top your accomplishments or a friend who would compare their achievements to yours, no matter how small. At first, you might have chalked it up to their competitive spirit, but after a while, it became clear. Their need to win wasn't about celebrating your success. It was about diminishing yours so they could feel superior. It becomes a form of emotional one-upmanship that can, over time, erode your self-esteem and enjoyment of shared victories. But the Stoic approach is a breath of fresh air in this context. A Stoic would see this dynamic for what it truly is, a manifestation of insecurity. The person who constantly competes is trying to validate themselves by defeating others. But real inner peace, as the Stoics teach, comes not from comparing oneself to others, but from focusing inward and striving to improve one's character. Who am I today compared to who I was yesterday? That's the real competition. Life isn't about always beating someone else, it's about winning the battle against your own limitations. Nostalgically, remember a time when you were caught up in the comparison game, maybe when you were younger. It wasn't just about accomplishments, it was about who had the better clothes, who was more popular, or who had the most followers on social media. Back then, it felt like there was always someone to measure yourself against, and if you were honest, Sometimes it made you feel inadequate. But as you grew, something shifted. You began to recognize that your value didn't lie in comparison to others. Number five, the overindulger. The overindulger is someone who seeks pleasure in excess. Whether it's food, drink, material possessions, or even entertainment, their life revolves around indulgence. They believe that happiness lies in the pursuit of more, more of what feels good in the moment, regardless of the long-term consequences. And at first, this might seem enticing. We all enjoy the comforts of indulgence. A nice meal, a glass of wine, or a lazy day spent on the couch can be incredibly satisfying. But the overindulger takes this to an extreme. It's never enough, and before long, what was once a treat becomes a crutch an escape from the deeper questions of life. In the beginning, you might be tempted to join them. You might think, why not? It's fun. It feels good. What's the harm? But as time goes on, you start to feel the effects, physically, emotionally, and mentally. The short-term pleasure they seek comes with long-term consequences that are hard to ignore. What was once a joyful indulgence turns into a source of stress, guilt, and dissatisfaction. Stoicism, on the other hand, teaches us moderation. It's not about denying ourselves pleasure entirely, but about recognizing when enough is enough. As Epictetus put it, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Indulgence in moderation is a healthy response to life's pleasures, the Stoics would urge you to find balance, to seek contentment not in excess, but in simplicity and self-discipline. Overindulgence only leads to more cravings, more desires, and more dissatisfaction. True contentment comes from the recognition that we don't need more to be happy. We need less to appreciate what we already have. Have you ever found yourself caught up in the pursuit of excess? Maybe you thought that if you could just buy that one thing, eat that one meal, or go on that one vacation, everything would feel complete. But then, when you got what you wanted, it wasn't enough. You wanted more. The cycle of indulgence is a never-ending loop that only leads to fleeting satisfaction. This is where the stoic mindset offers a stark contrast. Instead of chasing pleasure, Stoics seek wisdom, virtue, and inner peace. 
they understand that true happiness doesn't come from external things. It comes from mastering our desires. Think back to times when you overindulged, whether it was eating a whole pizza, drinking too much, or overspending on things you didn't need. In those moments, did it bring you lasting happiness, or did it leave you feeling empty? The Stoic mindset teaches us to step back and question our impulses. Do I really need this? Will it bring me lasting joy? By practicing moderation, you begin to free yourself from the cycle of overindulgence and move toward a life of balance and self-control. As you continue on your path of self-improvement, ask yourself, what indulgences do I need to cut back on? How can you embrace a more balanced life where pleasure is experienced in moderation and not as an escape from deeper issues? Number six, the cynic. The cynic is the person who believes that everyone has an ulterior motive. They're the ones who look at the world through a lens of suspicion, convinced that people are driven by selfishness and that good deeds are always tainted with hidden agendas. The cynic might tell you, no one does anything for free. Everyone wants something in return. At first, you might dismiss them. You might think, well, surely not everyone is like that. But over time, you begin to notice how their worldview begins to shape their interactions. They doubt others' intentions, and as a result, they miss out on the beauty of trust, compassion, and authentic human connection. The Stoics, in contrast, argue that virtue is its own reward. They reject the notion that good actions are always motivated by self-interest. Marcus Aurelius once said, Waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one. The Stoic mindset is not about assuming the worst in others. It's about being virtuous yourself, regardless of what others do. While cynicism breeds mistrust, Stoicism encourages us to trust in the goodness of humanity and lead by example. A Stoic believes that actions should be guided by wisdom, justice, courage, and temperance, whether or not others are doing the same. Think about a time when you were surrounded by cynicism. Maybe it was at work, where every good idea was met with skepticism and doubt. Or maybe it was in a relationship where you always felt like you had to prove your intentions. It's draining. Cynicism creates a toxic atmosphere where trust is hard to come by. You begin to feel like you're always on the defensive, justifying every action, every word. But the stoic approach would be to let go of that defensive mindset. You don't have to prove yourself to anyone. You only need to live according to your own virtues and trust that the right people will see you for who you truly are. Number seven, the egoist. The egoist is someone who sees the world only through the lens of their own needs, desires and perspectives. Everything they do is motivated by self-interest and they often fail to see or consider the needs of others. At first, this might seem harmless. After all, we all have needs and it's natural to prioritize our own well-being. However, the egoist takes this to an extreme. They see themselves as the center of the universe and everything and everyone around them is just a backdrop to their own story. Their actions are driven by an inflated sense of self-importance and their lack of empathy can make them seem distant, cold and disconnected from the people around them. Stoicism, however, teaches the opposite. Marcus Aurelius again offers wisdom on this matter urging us to remember that we are part of a larger whole. What is not good for the beehive cannot be good for the bees. The Stoic understands that true happiness comes not from serving the self, but from serving the greater good. Self-interest, when it becomes self-centeredness, is a path to isolation. The Stoic seeks harmony with others understanding that the best way to fulfill their own potential is to contribute to the well-being of the collective. Selfishness leads to dissatisfaction, while selflessness leads to fulfillment. Have you ever interacted with an egoist, someone who always steers the conversation back to themselves, 
disregarding your thoughts or feelings. At first it might be frustrating, but after a while you realize that their behavior isn't personal, it's a reflection of their internal struggles. They are so wrapped up in themselves that they can't see beyond their own desires. But Stoic wisdom teaches us not to respond in kind. Instead of feeding the egoist's need for validation, we can show compassion, understanding that their behavior stems from insecurity and a lack of self-awareness. Number 8. The Gossip Monger Gossip can feel like a harmless pastime, just some idle chatter about other people's lives. But the gossip monger takes it to another level. They live for the drama, always eager to spread rumors, share secrets, or engage in conversation that tears others down. It's often masked as just talking, but beneath the surface, it's a reflection of insecurity and a need to feel superior. The gossip monger's life revolves around the lives of others, constantly pulling people's stories into the conversation, not for the sake of connection, but for control and entertainment. In the beginning, you might find yourself drawn into gossip. It's easy to get caught up in the excitement of a juicy story or to share your own opinions about others. But over time, you start to notice how toxic it is. Gossip creates division, breeds mistrust, and can leave people feeling hurt, betrayed, or exposed. It's a cycle of negativity that damages relationships and weakens communities. The Stoic approach is to reject gossip altogether. The wisdom of Marcus Aurelius reminds us that we should focus on what is within our control and not waste time on things that do not serve our purpose. Gossip distracts us from our true calling, it's a drain on energy and a waste of time. The Stoics urge us to engage in conversations that are meaningful and constructive, not those that tear others down. Nostalgically, think about the times when you've been part of a gossip circle, maybe in high school or at work. It felt good at first. There was a sense of bonding over shared secrets and judgments. But eventually you started noticing the harm it caused. People got hurt, friendships were strained, and in the end, you realized that gossip never brought you anything of real value. It was just a distraction from the deeper issues at hand. When you find yourself in the presence of a gossip monger, ask yourself, how does this serve me? Do you want to be part of a cycle of negativity, or do you want to engage in conversations that build people up, not tear them down? It's a choice, and the Stoic path leads to conversations of truth, respect, and wisdom. Number 9. The Energy Vampire Energy vampires are those individuals who drain the life out of you with their negativity, complaints, and constant need for validation. They're always in crisis mode, always demanding attention and support, but never offering anything in return. At first, you might be sympathetic. You might want to help them, thinking that they just need a listening ear or a kind word. But over time, you begin to feel the emotional toll. Their constant need for reassurance becomes draining. You feel like you're giving and giving, but they're never satisfied. Stoicism offers a powerful antidote to this type of person. The Stoic teaches us to cultivate inner peace and resilience, so that we are not swept away by the emotional demands of others. We can show compassion without allowing others to drain us. Seneca, one of the great Stoic philosophers, said, It is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste a lot of it. Don't let the energy vampire waste your time or your emotional energy. Protect your peace and focus on what truly matters. Think back to times when you've been around someone who drained you. Maybe they were constantly complaining, always finding something to be upset about. It's exhausting. After a while, you realize that they're not looking for solutions. They're looking for sympathy and attention. And no matter how much you give, it's never enough. The stoic approach is to set boundaries, to offer empathy, 
without losing yourself in their emotional turmoil. Nostalgically, remember when you didn't know how to say no, when you felt obligated to help everyone, even when it drained you. But as you've grown, you've learned the importance of emotional boundaries. You can be compassionate without sacrificing your own well-being. And when you encounter an energy vampire, you can choose to protect your energy and focus on relationships that bring mutual support and growth. Number 10. The Lord of Pessimism. The Lord of Pessimism sees the world through a lens of doom and gloom. They expect the worst from everything and everyone, and they rarely, if ever, look for the silver lining. Life to them is a series of obstacles and setbacks, and they approach each day with an air of resignation, expecting failure around every corner. At first, you might feel sympathy for them. Life can be tough, and sometimes it feels easier to expect the worst than to face the unknown with optimism. But over time, you begin to realize how draining their perspective is. The Lord of Pessimism brings a cloud wherever they go, casting shadows over moments that should be filled with joy, excitement and possibility. Their outlook on life can feel suffocating and it starts to rub off on everyone around them. Stoicism offers a counterpoint to pessimism by teaching us to accept that life is uncertain and things won't always go as planned. But rather than expecting the worst, the stoic mindset encourages us to focus on what we can control. We can't control the outcome, but we can control our response. Epictetus said, It's not things themselves that disturb us, but our opinions about them. The pessimistic person, lost in their own fears, has yet to embrace the stoic principle that we can rise above our negative thoughts and embrace the present moment with hope and purpose. Nostalgically, remember a time when you too may have seen the world as a place filled with obstacles and challenges. Perhaps you feared failure or you constantly thought about worst-case scenarios. But as you grew, you learned to adopt a more balanced outlook, a mindset that accepted uncertainty but refused to be controlled by it. You realized that optimism wasn't about denying the challenges of life, it was about facing them with courage and resilience. So, when you encounter the Lord of Pessimism, ask yourself, how can I shift my perspective? How can I focus on what's within my control and embrace each challenge as an opportunity for growth, rather than a reason to retreat? The Stoic Path invites us to change our attitude toward life and approach each day with the belief that we can handle whatever comes our way with calm, clarity and purpose. And that's a wrap on the 10 types of people Stoicism warns us about. It's not just about avoiding negativity. It's about protecting your peace and surrounding yourself with those who uplift and inspire you. If you've watched this far, drop a hundred in the comments below. This shows you're part of the 0.01% who are serious about taking control of your life and making intentional decisions. You're not just here to watch, you're here to grow. If you're truly ready to level up and take charge of your journey, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Join our community of action takers who are committed to self-improvement and transforming their lives. Hit that notification bell so you never miss another video packed with the wisdom and strategies to help you become the best version of yourself. Let's keep growing together.